Okay, so we are going to now work on the lab. I'm just going to go over a few of the problems because we didn't get a chance to grade it for you. So I wasn't able to send you the answers um, and have you check your answers. So let's work a couple problems. All right, so let's go over here. Now I'm going to use some of the pHs that I had in um, the lab that that I did in one of the classes. They may not be exactly your numbers, but you can use them just to make sure you know how to do the problem. All right, let's do HCl first. Now remember, with HCl, we got a pH of about 3O. Um, now, this is obviously very acidic. So my pOH is gonna be 13.70, although I don't probably don't need that here. And remember, for both my strongs, these are strong. So I don't need a Ka or Kb with these. If you use them, you can find them. They're really high numbers, like in the millions. I can't remember now. Uh, but you don't need them, all right? Because HCl goes to H plus plus Cl minus, and whatever concentration of hydrogen ion I have, that's how much of the original acid I had, all right? So all I need to do is the hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to HCl, is equal to 10 to the negative 0 0.30, and that is 0 0.50 molar. Okay. Now, for the uh, sodium hydroxide, we get about 13.30 for this, um, which means my pOH is 0 0.70 and so now I look at this and I say okay if I want hydroxide ion concentration is equal to the sodium hydroxide concentration which is equal to the negative I mean 10 sorry to the negative 0 0.70 and I haven't actually worked that out so I'm going to do that right now a negative 0.7 and that equals 0 0.20 molar okay so the main thing with these is that one I don't need to do the rice table because however much I, of my ion I have that's how much original acid I have and then I need to remember that I don't use my pH to get hydroxide concentration I have to convert it to pOH and then go uh, from there Okay, the next one I'm going to do is the acid. So we're going to come down here to the rice table and do the acid. Now the pH for this I got when I did the experiment was about 2.49. That means my pOH was 11.51. Now in order to find the original concentration, I need a Kb or Ka, sorry, like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a rice table and I'm going to react this with water and I'm going to get C2H3O2 minus plus H3O plus. All right. Now I want to find out what that is. So I'm going to call that Y. This is zero and this is zero. Then I have minus X, X plus X and plus X. Right. That gives me Y minus X, X, and X. Now, the good thing is I know what X is because I know what the hydrogen ion concentration is, or at least I can get it from this. So if I take um, hydrogen ion concentration, I'm going to call this X, or hydrogen ion concentration, is equal to 10 to the minus 2.49, which is 0 0.0032 molar. So I plug that in there plug that in there and plug that in there and then I'm going to set everything equal to Ka and solve for Y. So I get my Ka 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to 0 0.0032 squared divided by Y minus 0 0.0032 um, when I do that, y is equal to 0 
molar. Actually, it really should be 0 0.60 molar. Okay, let's look at Kb, right? So for ammonia, I get about 11.56 here, um, and this is 2.44 for pOH. Now let's look at the equilibrium here. I've got ammonia plus water is in equilibrium with ammonium ion plus hydroxide ion. Um, my Kb is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Notice how similar these are to each other. Um, and so I've got Y, uh, 0, 0. This is minus X, X, and X. Y minus X, X, and X. All right, but I know X, don't I? Now when I do this, remember, I'm not going to get OH from the pH. I'm going to get OH from the pOH. So if I take 10, the concentration of OH minus is 10 to the minus 2.44, and that equals 0 0.0036 molar. So again, I'm going to substitute. And when I do that, I get 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to 0 0.0036 squared divided by y minus 0 0.0036. Um, notice that we're, we, we are worrying about this little bit because it's 1, 2, 3. It's right at 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3, so I'm not going to ignore that. I put all that in, and I end up getting approximately... I get approximately for the molarity of Y is 0 0.72 molar. Okay, so now let's look at these problems. Um, this one is right out of your packet. Don't forget to reread your packet. There's a whole section on what happens when we dilute this. Now remember, we could just do this by process, process elimination. This is our answer. If I add F minus, it's going to shift this way. Now let's think about this. If I want my percent ionization to go up, I should have done this first, then what I want is for it to shift that direction. Okay. So if I put this in shifting the wrong way, if I put acid in shifting the wrong way, if I put this in, now here this is tricky. If I add this, you think, oh, well, it should push the reaction this way. The problem is that when I look at percent ionization, um, then I'm going to increase my ions here, right? So I'm going to increase X, sorry. But I'm also increasing my original concentration. So this is not going to shift the, the um, reaction in the direction I want. But if I add distilled water, then I can um, shift the reaction to go from one to two particles. Another way to look at HF is that HF is increasing the concentration, so it would like to shift from two particles to one, so it's going to shift in this way too. I add distilled water, I go from one particles to two, and it's going to shift in that direction. All right, the next one is caffeine. Now, again, this is all, this all should be done without a calculator. You have to be able to do this without a calculator. So let's look at how we do that. So this is just another rice table. So I went through, I did this in just a couple minutes, right? I don't need to worry about X, so it's 0 0.01 minus X, X, and X. But because this is uh, times 10 to the minus 3, or minus 4, excuse me, um, I don't have to worry about that. So I plug it all into this. Now, all of this should be done without a calculator. This is basically 4 times 10 to the minus 6. Take the square root of it, and that's that. So we need to work, if we don't know how to do that, on our scientific notation, making sure we know how to multiply and divide exponents. Once we do that, again, here's 
it's going to by times 10 to the minus 3 is going to be between these two it's going to be between 1 times 10 to the minus 3 and 1 uh, times 10 to the minus 2 so the pH is between 2 and 3 so again you've got to be able to do the mental math here using scientific notation and then again we need to put that between the two and so my answer is here I'll let you look this up um, all you have to do for this one is look up the 2018 uh, chemistry free response scoring guidelines and you'll get the rubric for this and you can uh, check on that and how to do that